To disrupt means to drastically alter or destroy the structure of. And that's what I did to real estate. Disruptors of industry simply take a deep dive into their field. They identify pain points and white spaces, right? And then they address them through product changes in marketing. Netflix, Tesla, Uber, SpaceX, Airbnb are all examples of this. And there is a distinct difference between disrupting and inventing. For example, Elon Musk didn't invent cars. He didn't even invent electric cars. He didn't even invent Tesla. But he did realize that fossil fuels weren't going to be a sustainable long-term solution for automobiles. And on top of that, before Tesla, electric cars were slow and lacked any sort of sex appeal. I mean, there was nothing hot about pulling up to a date in a Nissan Leaf back in 2011. Cars are brands. Look at every car commercial out there. That's what people are buying. They all get you from A to B. So Musk saw it as an opportunity and he made electric cars that could go from zero to 60 in two seconds. And he gave them long lasting batteries that compete with gas powered vehicles. And ultimately he redefined how an electric car should look, giving them a sleek, modern, sexy aesthetic. And it worked. Jeff Bezos didn't invent shopping. He didn't invent books or bookstores, the internet, or even e-commerce. It was all there. But he did realize that there was a more convenient way to shop. And despite being told that the internet is a fad and that shipping orders to customers will take too long, he used that as feedback to innovate and disrupt by building an enormous network of warehouses and distributors across the globe as he built Amazon Prime, driving the creation of things like one day and overnight shipping. So here's what I'm getting at. A lot of people interested in entrepreneurship feel they need to reinvent the wheel. And that's simply not the case. Entrepreneurs and disruptors aren't necessarily supposed to be Albert Einstein's or Alexander Graham Bell's or Thomas Edison's of the world. They're more and more like the Musk's and the Bezos. People that take existing products, services, and ideas and make 10x improvements to them. This goes beyond improvements to the product, right? Beyond improvements to the service or even just the idea itself. It also applies to the branding and marketing that surrounds the entire business. It's the same reason why Liquid Death, right? Which is in the news a lot right now, a company that sells water. There's a lot of water out there. They sell water in what otherwise looks like beer cans. And that company is now worth $700 million. They didn't change anything about the product. I mean, the water's fine, it's fine, okay? They just found a unique way to package and market the same thing that everybody else has been doing. In my case, when I got into real estate, the industry was slow. The industry was boring and old. Door knocking, posting flyers, and networking at coffee shops was seriously considered a good and efficient way to get new business. That's what I was told. That was my training. These were the days when having a personal website made you look like some sort of crazy futurist, right? Like, how could you ever do that? In real estate, you, you have your own website? What are you, an asshole? Coming into real estate in 2008, during a massive economic downturn, the industry was ripe for disruption. And that's, that's how I saw it. I'm not going to sit here and say that I had a master plan from day one. I mean, initially I became a real estate agent just in an attempt to pay my bills so that I wouldn't have to move back home with my parents at the age of 24 because I showed up every single day and focused on making 1% improvements. I was able to stumble my way uphill. And it was through that process of making constant iterations that things began to reveal themselves and, and become clear to me and clear to me and clear to me and eventually leading to what becomes a master plan for disruption. Four years into my career as a real estate agent, I decided to audition for this new show on a channel called Bravo. And the show was Million Dollar Listing New York. But here's the kicker. When I told my friends and family about it, almost everyone said it was a bad idea. When I ran it by my, my friend Dave, actually, he didn't even try to hide the fact that he thought it was an idiotic idea. Like, and he said something to me like, Ryan, really? How will being on a stupid reality TV show be good for a serious real estate business? 
business. I wouldn't hire a lawyer from a TV show. Why would someone hire a television real estate broker? Even worse, when I told my mom about it, she said something like, who will take you seriously if you're just running around town selling real estate on television? And more and more and more stuff that she said. I mean, like, ouch. When you're doing something that goes against the grain, you're going to have people telling you it's a bad idea. Even the people that love you and want the best for you because they're thinking about protecting you first and foremost. Deep down in my heart of hearts, while I saw a million dollar listing as a great opportunity to grow my personal brand, get more attention, and as a result, get more business, because it was gonna be international advertising that I could never actually even afford. A lot of people saw the same opportunity as ridiculous and stupid and idiotic and dumb and whatever, but lo and behold, the show ended up being a huge hit. 25 million people around the world would watch it week after week after week, and it helped me multiply my business many times over. It gave me a platform I never would have had. I think this was really the start of how I realized I could disrupt the real estate industry by focusing on content, attention, and community. So I started looking for more opportunities to optimize for those things. And while everyone else was still focused on antiquated methods to grow their business and making fun of me and all the shit, I decided to triple down on social. I hired a director of marketing, a videographer, and a handful of other creative people that had never been inside a real estate brokerage office ever, like ever. They were actually kind of scared. And that's when I launched my vlog on YouTube. And at the time, there wasn't a single real estate agent that was vlogging and creating property tour. At least not that I know of. There might've been one, but they weren't doing so well, so I have no idea. Through creating the vlog and taking my online presence more seriously, my personal brand began to explode. Over the next four years, I gained millions of followers across all social platforms. Because I was taking what I was doing on TV and I was putting it in people's hands. How does having a lot of followers have anything to do with disrupting the real estate industry, Ryan? I mean, you might be asking. Well, first and foremost, all the attention that I've received has resulted in a massive influx in the number of leads that I get through online channels, organic lead generation. And shockingly, even today, while my business has basically grown 10 times, other real estate agents are just now beginning to adopt social media as a viable channel for generating new leads. Meanwhile, I've been building an over 20 person content production team this entire time. But here's the thing, this isn't only about lead gen. I didn't just want to become the top selling real estate agent, I wanted to disrupt the entire industry. I wanted to change the face of sales forever. Even more important than the leads I have coming in through all of my social channels that supply a significant amount of business to my entire company and all the agents that work here is the community that we've built. In part, that's you watching this video right now. As ridiculous as it may actually sound, building this community, a network of talented, young, ambitious agents, entrepreneurs, and salespeople is, is my equivalent of Bezos building his network of warehouses for, for Amazon. And it's all because of this community that I've been able to launch my own company, my own brokerage, Sirhands, which will do over $2 billion in sales this year. And we've only been two years into this with no outside investment, just bootstrapping this, doing it on our own. And on top of that, this community is what birthed my education company, which now has over 12,000 agents in our network worldwide in over 110 countries. And those 12,000 agents have allowed us to create new services like, like Sirhant Connect, which enables us to sell real estate everywhere around the globe, from LA to Hong Kong, despite only formally having offices in New York City and the Hamptons. This is great and all, okay, but it's just the beginning. While the rest of the real estate world is finally coming around to adopting social media, my team and I are continuing to invest in content production, community building, and even the metaverse. And guess what? It's not just about real estate for me. Real estate will eventually be my bookstore. We have a master plan of what we are building that is bigger than I think anyone actually realizes. From content, to training, to commerce, and around and around and around we go. As we open Sirhant in a multitude of other verticals, I think the picture will start to get clearer and clearer and clearer. I gave a speech recently as my manifesto to the gig economy. The independent contractor, the salesperson, the person that's opting not to go and get a bachelor degree, who's saying, I'm gonna go work for myself in any capacity with one job or 15 jobs. All of us together were in the back of the line for the longest time. And now, due to COVID, 
Due to this recession that we're in, we are up at the front of the line and it's an amazing time, but it's an incredible time to disrupt the world for our group of people. And so there's a lot more to come. But if you're watching this and you're thinking about your own business ideas, or if you're stressed and you're anxious about, well, I don't know how to change the world, I just want you to know you don't have to. The world has provided all the ideas for you. You just have to take a different look at which one makes the most sense for you. Let me know in the comments what ideas you have. Maybe we could work on something together. We have a whole ventures department here. I'm, I'm invested in pickleball teams and commission purchase companies and everything. Maybe there's different things that we could all go and do together as business ideas. Let me know, put them in the comments. Let's blow things up. Let's disrupt the world together. Because like I said, you and me, we are a community now. And I'll see you in the next one.